Greetings, this is Liz Owens. I'm a science teacher with Indiana Gateway Alternative School. Just want to give you some information about the eclipse that's happening one week from today, April 8th, Monday, 2024, and give you some safety information and things to think about. Uh, so uh, we call this uh, Umber Files Unite Day. We'll explain that in just a minute. But if you're interested in the eclipse, then uh, I think this is the place for you to be and see what's going on. So uh, first, let me share with you a screen here. And you can see the map of Indiana. And what I was going to do in the live sessions was show you uh, where you might be watching. Now, this purple line here is the absolute center of the path of totality. But and we'll talk what that means in just a second. You can see to either side, there's more. So if you're in this zone, you're going to see the complete solar eclipse. A little better, a little worse, depending on where you are. So I live in Indianapolis. So I'm going to put a star right there. And you can see Indianapolis is really close to the line. And uh, there'll be great viewing here. And so you can see many of these other cities in central and southern Indiana. Sorry, northern Indiana, you're not going to get as good a view, but it'll be OK. OK. So I wanted to show you that first and think about where the eclipse is going to be seen. So let's go to some slides then and talk about what is a solar eclipse and what's going to be happening on that day. So the, again, the date is Monday, April 8th, 2024. And you can see with this diagram that it's gonna go all the way from Mexico all the way up into Canada, the viewing. And right now the weather is looking good for next Monday afternoon at about three o'clock. And you can see absolute totality would be at 306 at Butler University on the north side of Indianapolis. So we'll see some other changes along with that. So this is not a lunar eclipse. This is a solar eclipse. So a lunar eclipse is when the Earth cast its shadow on the moon. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about a solar eclipse. Now, what makes the difference? In a solar eclipse, the sun and the Earth, the moon gets in between, and it blocks out the light from the sun. Now, the sun makes its own light. The moon doesn't. And the moon just reflects light from the sun, even a little bit from the Earth. An umbra is the direct middle portion of the shadow that the moon breaks. So that's why we talk about an umbra file is someone who loves an eclipse. The penumbra is the, to the sides, a little bit less of the shadow. But this is basically the lineup. So we're going to demonstrate for you that for you for just a minute here. Okay, so you are the earth, and here is the sun. Okay, there's the sun. And you're on the earth, and here's the sun, and normally in the daylight, the sun is shining on you, right? Well, in an eclipse, the moon is going to get between us. I have this funny little Star Wars badge I'm going to use. It says, never tell me the odds. It's from he and Solo, right? But we're going to use this as our moon today. So here's the sun shining at you on the earth. Okay. And uh, here comes the moon across. And let me tie, get this. We switch hands. That probably worked better. And so you will see that the moon will start to block out the sun. And it will keep going until the sun is completely blocked out. And then the moon keeps moving in its normal path and goes away like that. 
So that's kind of a rough way to think about it, but I wanted to give you a little visual of how it would look. So let's go back to sharing our screen. And so there again, you can see the earth and the sun with the moon in between, and that will create a total solar eclipse. So here is actual pictures of what an eclipse looks like. Now here in central Indiana, you can see it's gonna start, uh, you can see the central time and the Eastern time, and it will start here with the full sun visible, then less of the sun, then less, then total eclipse, and then what we call totality. And the total eclipse starts to end, the moon keeps moving on, more of the sun appears all the way along. Now, there's some safety considerations with this. So first of all, there's different kinds of eclipses. Sometimes we just get a partial eclipse, the moon blocking the sun. It depends on where you are on the earth. Sometimes it's called annular, but this one is gonna be a total eclipse. So you're actually gonna see these beads along there. Here's what totality looks like. And when the moon is completely in front of the sun, the sky will take on kind of a reddish cast. It's kind of weird, kind of eerie, but there's nothing to be scared about. It's just something special that's happening. So know that there's gonna be a point where the light will really go down. Many of our safety folks have said, be careful during this time because people may be trying to drive or get around with their solar eclipse glasses on and they may not realize the light's gonna almost disappear, okay? Now also at this point is when you could take your solar eclipse glasses off if you wanted to capture it or if you're trying to take photos, etc you may want to make some changes. So here is a good description of what you should do. And I have a set of eclipse glasses from the 2017 eclipse that I have right here. And I'll show them to you in a minute. So basically, there's been a lot of talk, are all eclipse glasses good? No, there are some bad ones out there, but here's how you test it. First of all, Put it on in the house, and if you really can't see stuff in the house, uh, they're probably good. If they pass the indoor test, then try them outside on a sunny day. And again, the light will appear very faint if the glasses are safe. And you might even try actually glancing up at the sun and see how the glasses work. If you see the sun appearing comfortably bright, they'll be safe. OK, you never want to be looking straight at the sun more than you have to be. So let me stop the share again. And show you these glasses. And uh, there is some things have been reported that bad ones made in the United States and also in China are out there on the market. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Usually they have an ISO and a lot of good information. Uh, usually good ones have an address for the company that made them. But you can see how dark these are. They really are designed for protecting and filtering your eyes. And uh, let me also say that there are a lot of places that are giving away glasses right now. Uh, I know that a lot of Board of Health departments like the Marion County Board of Health is having a big event on Saturday where they're giving away glasses. If you're going to the Speedway with us, uh, they're giving away the greatest spectacles in Eclipse, okay? So there's all kinds of great glasses out there, different ones. Uh, when we had the Eclipse in 2017, they seemed to be in short dis uh, supply, but there seems to be plenty of glasses you can buy and so on. Just make sure you get good, safe ones. Let me share again. All right, now here are some things that uh, you can use. Uh, you need to have really good filters. Some people have welding glasses or welding helmets. Those will work also. 
uh, or mylar filters. But regular sunglasses are not so good. You don't want to use those. Unfiltered binoculars or telescopes you should not use. Those will not protect your eyes. Cell phone cameras will not protect your eyes. Now, when you get to the point that it's absolute totality, that's the point because the sun's parts are not showing around there, the light's not coming through, uh, that's when you can take off your eclipse glasses or use your cell phone camera or other things to look at it. But that's only for a few minutes and then you wanna get them back on as the eclipse continues. Now I do wanna show you some other things that you could use that make some really cool eclipse viewing. And they show a pinhole camera here, but I'm gonna show you some pictures that were made by other things. First of all, this first picture is just simply seeing the eclipse through uh, leaves on a tree. Pretty neat, huh? The second picture is just simply the eclipse showing up through a curtain that had kind of little holes in it, kind of a gauzy curtain, and you can see the eclipse there. And then the third one, look at all these tiny little eclipses, and that's through a colander. So let me show you a couple items I used at the last eclipse. I used this spoon. So you want to have the sun behind you, and you want to get it in the right place so you can see it. And you want to project down on the ground or onto a wall, something paper even. You could tape on the wall or a window. And uh, you could capture all these, the eclipse coming through all these little holes. Pretty interesting. Here's a colander that I also used last time. And again, you know, get the sunlight coming through from behind you and the small eclipses will be projected out on the wall or the floor, the ground, the grass. Uh, you can see some really neat pictures and artistic pictures that happen that way. Okay. Take a second, look at those again. Sorry, I have just a bit of a cold here in April. Okay. So here is, again, when it's safe to look at things, when it's not. And when we're actually at totality, after you don't see the beads, the diamond ring or the beads still showing around the edge of the sun, when it's at totality, you may safely remove your eclipse glasses and you don't have to have a solar filter. But again, that's only a few minutes. And once the sun comes back on, definitely put it back on. How long is totality? Well, I keep saying just a few minutes. Here in Indianapolis, it's going to run about three minutes and 49 seconds. Now, notice this long pathway again of the eclipse. And you can see some places are going to have much shorter time. Some places will have a little longer time. But a lot of places will be able to view the eclipse as long as the weather is good. Now, we're going to send out an email and ask you to upload photos and recordings that you may take for the eclipse. We'd like to make an INGDA video. And also watch for a Padlet page that we'll be sending out. There's also a lot of great eclipse playlists and a lot of other information uh, about uh, what kind of wine to drink at what point of the eclipse. And there's a lot of fun stuff out there. So take a look around and also explore your options of where you can gather to view the eclipse. And if you want to look at the Department of Homeland Security, they have great information and videos on there about the safety. So let's talk about that last piece just a minute. We're expecting 100,000 people to come and join all of the normal residents of Indiana in looking at the eclipse. So safety is key when that many people are coming into town. 
Uh, this will be about four times the number of people who come into town for the annual Indianapolis 500. So think about that many more people than the 500 day uh, all around a certain time span. Uh, so be safe. Do not drive with your solar eclipse glasses on. Make sure others are not doing that. Make sure you protect your eyes when you want to look at the sun during the eclipse, even in the partial stages and afterwards. And there's going to be a lot of traffic. So take your time, be patient, and have a very safe eclipse. If you have any questions, please email me at eowens at ingda.net, and I'll be happy to answer those for you. Thank you, and happy Eclipse Day.